Welcome to Raw Down. Raw Welcome. Down. April 10th, 2006. We're in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Fuck the Packers. How's everyone doing? We're in Milwaukee. Are we? Oh, my bad. <laughs> we are? I got Smackdown on the brain. Uh, just like Michael Smack- Cole on Smackdown, he goes, Welcome to Monday. And then Taz goes, We're on Friday. This is wrestling, Cole. But this is Monday. <laughs> Hey guys, how's it going? Hello. Fuck Hi. the Bucks. <laughs> yeah. Hi there. Hi. Did mm. anyone check up on Peter Gabriel? We haven't seen him since Mania. Uh, no. Why no, not? I, I, mean... I think I think Jack's still in jail, but. Oh man, I miss Jack. Yeah. Me too. What the fuck? <laughs> Why did they bring him in? Just, just so he can go to jail for twenty plus, twenty to life, like. Oh, maybe. Ooh, maybe yeah. Gabriel's bringing him a sledgehammer to break him out. Big time. We're gonna oh, get Jack, Jack and Gabriel out of come his back cell. as a tag team. I like that. Yeah, maybe, That's maybe funny. at the end of the year. Yeah, I didn't know the high there was the start of big time, and I thought Ty just put in some like the weed <laughs> shop music. So it sounds like Hi there. the same sort of thing. Yeah. See, I just keep thinking it's big time rush every time everyone does that. <laughs> Amen. Larger than life. You're the only person that's ever thought about Big Time Rush in the year of our Lord. Uh, what? <laughs> when is this coming out? 2034. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, I am on it. Man, we got the ball rolling. We got a new year, new me, new April 10th. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is this is this another attempt to get me to talk about? The opening segment here. If that if that's what you want to go in, because I, we got I, uh, I, yeah, this, April tenth is a new year, huh? To some people, maybe I don't know. Let's look it up. It's a new year for uh, for Germany. Nico, tell me about it. Um. Well, April twentieth is uh. Huh. <laughs> what you said, Germany? Yeah, it's April tenth, not twentieth. Oh. Oh, I don't know what's going on with Germany. All right, fair <laughs> enough. How about this triple threat match? That backlash. Are you guys excited for it? Uh, no. Why not? No. Yeah, honestly, I don't know. The card seems kind of icky. No, this is probably like one of the worst cards I've seen, like being built up for a long time. Like Mania was not bad. Yeah. Like I thought, yeah. looking looking at starting Raw down and going, man, I'm gonna have fun torturing the Raw crew. <laughs> And I don't know what happens mostly on SmackDown <laughs> because, I mean, I didn't really grow up watching SmackDown. It was on Friday. And it was, yeah. You know, you, you got stuff you got to do. But Monday, you know, you got, you got two hours to kill. But I I don't remember anything on SmackDown. But Raw, I was like, damn, this Mania is going to be dog shit. And Mania was actually pretty good. But Backlash? See, holy shit. Wow. <laughs> dude, yeah, like the all of the lead-up stuff to Mania – was just a drag. It was terrible. Nothing happened. And then the show was fine. Pretty good. Yeah, if I can recall, the best matches we got before Mania was the TLC match with Edge and Ric Flair, which was on a DVD I used to watch with ladder matches. So I already watched that 10,000 times. Still good Mm -hmm. today. Go watch that. And then Mm -hmm. the biggest underdog match like it just surprisingly kept in my brain as long as it did was the New Year's Revolution Mickey James versus Trish Stratus match. It was better than Mania. Go watch mm-hmm. that. Dave Meltzer gave it negative two stars. That what? man, I don't. <laughs> no, I'm not even joking. He gave it like negative two stars. What is he an idiot? It's actually oh, yeah. a really good match. <laughs> it was the best wow. match of the show. Uh, speaking of like, what he's been publishing this week, he, he kind of is losing it a bit. But I guess he was losing it before too. Yeah. Yeah. We never had it, and both of those matches were in January, so we slogged through three months to get to Mania. Yep. Sm- and and now Raw continues to bring the slog as we have an, I think, 23-minute opening promo. 23-minute promo. Oh, my goodness. Yes. <sighs> yeah. No commercials. No breaks. I stayed awake. I don't know how. I only have one thing to say about this, and I will wait till the end, because this is not my segment. <laughs> so, we open the show... And we are asked if we are cognizant of who Edge is. And him and Lita come out. And I want to open with an apology. Because I have for weeks been saying there's only three women on this show that can wrestle. That being Mickey, Trish, and Victoria. I forget Lita wrestles because they never let her do it. 
but she can also do it. So there's actually four. My I, apologies I, to Lee. Th- this is, honestly, same thing. I also forgot that she's in a wrestler. Was she yeah. injured at the time? Because like I like I, I haven't been reading dirt sheets. I I try to do that when we first started the show, but I, I'm just too busy. She had I, a match I with Maria like a yeah. month. And a half ago? I think it's the uh, Rhea Ripley thing where, like, because she's so intertwined in the um, Edge's act, they don't want to, like, having matches without him. That's so bizarre because she's yeah. so good on her own. Yeah, so apologies she, to Lita. And yeah, it's Lita's probably that, better. too. Because what's a better way to make a good wrestler heel than to not make him wrestle a match? And uh, let's, let's yeah, uh, since I did it on Smack Up, Raw Down. Uh, stuff came out about the Lita sex celebration. We apologize to Lita. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. Um, that sucks, man. Like, what the fuck? Fuck Vince. You're, wait, he's a freak. Wait, wait. I thought we've already talked about those uh, things. What's up? Did we talk what, about what that? Up? Yeah. I, I think. thought we talked thought... about it on Smack Up and not on Raw. No, we talked about it during the segment. Because, like, No, I, I no, remember. they just came out, like, new stuff saying that she didn't what? want to do it. He oh, said no. she didn't want to do it. Yeah, that, that's time. always been out. <laughs> oh, well, I guess I and just I read the Reddit it. post. Oh, <laughs> fuck, dude. My brain broke. It's okay. I think All right. Brain broke. To continue but, but, just the strongest opening of Raw Down that we have right. ever had. That's we've right. associated. We're just we've talking. had 17 different segues. Preach. Vince is bad. Edge is here, and he is so excited that he's back in the title hunt. He is chewing his gum Mr. Kennedy style. Oh, yeah. Just really, really chawing on that. I paid more attention to that than basically anything else that happens over these next 20 minutes. So he runs down all of the contenders and John Cena, and the crowd boos literally all of them. Surely that's a good sign. You definitely want that to happen. Yes. He demands appreciation from the crowd, who just boo him more. He says he's the most watched champion the past five years. Please shut the fuck up about the ratings. I will kill you. At this point, Jahan Singh has had enough. He comes out, wags his finger, hits the ring. Somebody has another cuck Fina sign. <laughs> John Cena comes in and says, shut the fuck up. I'm the champion, you're not. Also, lead as a hoe. Oh. He says... The two weeks of ratings that Edge had are people tuned to see who beat John Cena, and then they tuned in to see John Cena beat Edge's ass. What's left okay. unsaid here is that I guess maybe the ratings died after John Cena got it back. I don't know. But this is an own, I guess. And then John says, what if we actually just fight? And then Edge hides behind Lita, and he just keeps talking. Edge says he hates the whole crowd, and they also hate him. And John, you shouldn't care what they think. John gets back on the mic. He acknowledges the mixed reaction that he gets all the time. It's 2006. We've already started this. This continues for a decade. And John (laughs) Cena teases a heel turn again. That never happens. And people get excited about it because it's all they want. And it'll never happen. John Cena starts talking about how people want him to be evil. And then he says, they want me to be black, and then takes a pause, huh? and white, and I thought that was funny. And so he prattles on about that, and then Triple H shows up to make this even worse. And they, the crowd continues to shout, you tapped out, to just further underscore how stupid him being here at all is, after jobbing clean in the main event of WrestleMania, with a tap out, and he basically just come out and said, wow, nuh I'm Triple H. I guess, game, uh... is the feud. Yeah, he right. says, people respect me. No, they don't. He the Nobody game. respects me. He the game. Nobody respects you, Hunter. Nobody respects you. Can we you. talk about his hair real quick? Because it is flowing. He's got it that is flow. Beautiful. It is very... Like, I don't know how he does it. I was watching it with my wife, and I was like, man, look at his hair. Look at that fucking yeah, he... flow. It's crazy. He has nice hair. I don't know how he does it. He prattles on... Edge demands respect. Hunter and Cena basically ignore him. And Edge says, yeah, wow, I'd prove I'm worthy of respect tonight, but I'm still recuperating from Mania. And he says he'll win at Backlash. And then Triple H makes fun of McFoley. 
No. None of these people are at all getting each other over or anything. They're all just saying, hey, you suck, and I'm good, and then everyone else says, no, actually, all of you suck. Nobody's getting over. Nobody's building up anything. If any of these people lose, it doesn't matter anymore. John Cena just got pinned last week. What does it fucking matter? Edge is bleeding from his hairline again for no obvious reason. <laughs> and the capper of this segment, Triple H says Vince called him. And now this week we have John Cena and Triple H in a handicap match against Edge in a different formation than we had last week. I can't wait for next week when they do the same shit again, mm -hmm. but with the of last possible iteration. This went 23 minutes. Nothing of note was accomplished. They all just buried each other. The crowd hates all of them. The shit sucks. I think the three takeaways I have from it was that uh, Triple H actually acknowledged that Vince is his dad. He's like, my dad called me. My father-in-law. And, whoa, who's that? Does he say Vince? I don't even think he says Vince. I think I he says my. He I think my father-in-law. I got a call. It says like the big man the or big whatever. Man. Yeah, it says big man. Okay. Oh. No, it's weird. They reference each other, but like they don't directly reference each other. They will continue to do that because I don't know for whatever reason. Because like when they first started dating in kayfabe. It was like 2000 <laughs> when they got fake married, but they weren't married till like 2003. So like it was like yeah. three years later. So I don't know. They just kind of like hint at it. Like you're a child. Like I remember being a kid going like, I, I know they're fucking together, but like what? Oh, yeah, <laughs> Why do they keep a... teasing I... it? I, I think it's more of like a wink, wink, nudge, nudge kind of thing. Like they know, you know, but it's for those who know, like they, they're trying to ex like, for those who don't know, it's like, why do they keep doing this? I want to know. You know what I mean? I mean, she's pregnant, and they just did it, like, a couple weeks ago, and they acknowledged that, like, your best yeah, friend. Yeah, but you, you, you got to remember, all these shows are not only shot to continue a story, they're shot as if this is your first time seeing them. Because for a lot of people, any episode yeah. could be your first episode. Yeah, that's very true. I, I keep, like, forgetting because I'm a freak. And I'm, yeah. I'm sure me and Martin are the freaks here that just will watch them all. Like, he watches all of AEW. I'll watch all of the Fed stuff. I watched, oh, I watched Dynamite. Don't put that but, on me. Well, sorry, I meant, I meant, oh, Dyna no. I meant Dynamite. I'm sorry. I meant Dynamite mm. in general. But, like, you know, like the one show. So I forget, like, if you're the first time watching, it's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, that they have to keep explaining shit. Yeah. Uh, it it's annoying as a longer fan, but it's like you, you get used to it. Another thing, I'm so sick of John Cena's uh, promo style in this, where he goes, like, and then I guess I'm the jackass, and then he'll try to like leave, and he'll be like, but I'm just joking, and he's done that like three fucking weeks in a row, where he's like, I'm gonna, I guess I'll just leave. Oh, uh, but actually, I'm still here. Ha <laughs> ha. He needs to stop that. I, I really hope that stops soon. I'm sick of him doing the little fake out. He he, shut up. Not, <laughs> and in three, I think it's not, funny that gets under your skin. Stop fucking talking about ratings. Nobody cares in 2006. You're either watching Raw or you're watching wh like what the fuck's on on Monday night on 2006. You're not watching anything know. else. Maybe fucking NBA. If there's a game on NBA, you're not watching fucking WWE, and that's always been the case. If it's Monday Night Football, yeah. you ain't watching, but it's, what, April? What the fuck's no, on dude, NBA? It was, was Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy. That, that was a segment on SmackDown. I think it was Grey's Anatomy is on Fridays. Okay. Yep. Cool. Okay, so, yeah. Okay, so that's not even it. That's why so many I, people I, watched I, Raw, because nobody had anything else to do. <laughs> so, can I say one thing about John Cena's promo? Yeah. So he's listing off a bunch of attributes, and at some point he just very quietly goes, slightly sexual. What is oh, he trying to imply here? He's pompous, crass, a little bit sexual. I, yeah, that was kind of weird. Dude, I don't get it. I, I, I think I, I think he was trying to convince everybody that he is a man who gets women, but we know he's the alpha incel, so this is impossible. Yeah. And so they cut to break, and then, ah, we have another WWE.com Unlimited moment where uh, Rob Conway, yeah, you guys remember Rob Conway? We haven't, Hell yeah. have we talked to him about him at all on this show? He's yeah, here. It, was, 
in the battle royal that Big Show won. He's okay. a main event star, and I don't know why they don't show him more. He uh, him. he bopped heads True. with uh, Triple H on the way out. That will set up a feud, you know? Rob Conway and oh, Triple yeah. H. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. Just I... look at him. Robert Conway and Jean-Paul Levesque. It works. Ooh, yeah, bring back La Resistance. Ooh, you know, Ooh. Rob Conway beat Triple H in a two out of three falls match. Huh? What? Yeah. <laughs> on Velocity. Oh, oh on Velocity. Okay, oh, okay, sure. okay, 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 fair enough. Check out Velocity. You don't believe Wait, you me? Go who, watch yeah, it. You know who Rob Conway can't ever beat? Yeah, who? And that's Mr. Money the Bank himself, Rob Van Dam. Oh, Battle Creek Rob? That's right, Battle Creek Rob. He's coming out here hyped up on yogurt enemas, oh. and <laughs> <laughs> he will not be stopped by Rob He's Conway. one of a kind. <laughs> that's right. Uh, he came straight from Kellogg. So... Uh, yeah, so Rob Conway, he came out, he bumped into Triple H, and he was like, hey, aren't we both cool? Triple H, aren't we? E- aren't you equally as cool as me, Rob Conway? So then he gets punched in the head. So he's starting out the match already with battle damage. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't even like they cut the back from commercial, and they just show Rob in the ring. He's like, ow, my head. My head. <laughs> and then they show the fucking bit from the commercial break. <laughs> it's yeah. just like so, so that stupid. Was, that was already dumb. Uh, so... Robin Dan comes down to the ring. He's announced as Mr. Money in the Bank, of course. Uh, and then before the match even starts, Shelton Benjamin's music kicks Ain't in. No and stop he starts me, walking nah. down. Uh, you know, in a nice outfit. He's got the belt. He's got his shades on. Uh, he's missing and something. So, oh, he's, he's missing Mama. He's missing Mama. He's I missing mean, Mama. God, we miss her so much. But, you know, so as he's walking down uh the ram robin dam you know is watching him he's like what's going on here he's handing the ref the briefcase like keep this on keep this on lock in case i need it who knows what's going to happen uh, and then rob conway just runs up behind him and starts hitting him starting the match early but because i guess yeah man. uh yeah i you know Shelton benjamin joins the commentary team while just nothing is happening in the ring for like five minutes uh and starts talking smack about how he's challenging uh, Rob Van Dam to a match at Backlash for the Money in the Bank title. Uh, I believe the quote is, uh, he has an open challenge for the closed briefcase. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so all this happens, uh, and they're like, don't worry, Shelton, we'll tell him. While also just uh, screaming when a five-star frog splash happens. Uh, Rob Van Dam did do a cool move where he jumped off the top rope and just kicked Rob Conway in the jaw, mm-hmm. uh, further uh, shattering his already wounded face from his uh, Triple H run in. <laughs> and then, yeah, just after that, nothing happened. The, the match was nothing. It was a squash match, I guess, just to have Shelton Benjamin come out and look cool and set up their match yeah, you uh, at get Backlash. It it did get Rob a dub against the most powerful man of all time, Rod Conway. This is correct. <laughs> Rod Conway would have won if Triple H hadn't cheap shot at him. This is Bullshit. this is true. No, you guys are right. I, you know, you're a hundred percent. Yeah, man. But Rob Van Dam, he said he accepts Shelton's challenge as long as Shelton puts up the IC Championship belt. So we got some backlash heat. That's cool. I. That promo was so bizarre because they're blasting one of a kind. And then the pro- – like, I don't know. I forgot who was coming out. They have, like, a new guy out there now. And he's shoving the microphone in the Rob's face. They go, Rob, you cannot hear this man because they're blasting no. one of a kind. And like, hey, oh hey Rob, hey, Rob, what uh, what do you think about this? He's like, I'll fight up at Backlash. Yeah, bring up the IG Trapped Backlash. And you're like, what is he saying? Why are they playing his fucking music during a promo? You know Sheldon can't hear it with the fucking headphones on. <laughs> he can't. <laughs> There's no point in this. I doubt the crowd can hear it. No. <laughs> no, no hear there's it. no way. There's no chance. Yeah, RVD does the thing where he points at his head and has the crowd go Rob Van Dam, but only some people see it because they can't tell he's doing a promo and they're not <laughs> looking at him. Yeah, so... Afterwards, they they make it set that he's fighting for the IC belt and the briefcase, so it's a, a like a title for briefcase match. Yeah, which that's exciting. And uh, I got some news for you, Dave. Uh oh. Rob Conway is a three-time former World Tag Team Champion, and 
He was a two-time world heavyweight champion of NWA, so he is a two-time mm-hmm. world champion. Yeah. What? He's and extremely powerful. And a four-time NWA world tag team champion. And if you want to even go deeper with OVW, if you count that, a five-time heavyweight champion. An 11-time what? OVW Southern Tag Team champion. Ten times with Nick Dinsmore. And one time with Pat Buck. Just, why did he just come out here and just get killed? Just look <laughs> at him. Yeah, I'm surprised Martin didn't get angry about Pat Buck being teammates with Rob Conway. What? Yeah, man. Yeah, You guys are right. The tri- the. Triple H cheap shot really did set him up for failure. He here. was he was yeah. a big deal of like the indie scene back in that day. So we it's, owe all of this backlash heat to Triple H. Go to, it's go fucking to bullshit. I hope Triple H uh, goes bald. <laughs> that would be really that would shocking. Never happen. That'd be scary. I don't want to. I don't want that future. Please, no. Please, his no hair looks mistakes. so good. Ty just commented on it. <laughs> I have two things here. Sure. Yeah. One. Somebody has a sign that says uh, "Cena fears Diddley." Who? I, I I did not this, see that sign. This is all the information I have. The second to put to answer the question, what was on TV? I'm going to introduce a recurring segment that I will forget about next week of I'm what was actually this. on TV on April 10th, 2006, at 8 p.m. Sick. According to TVTango.com, at 8 p.m. you had a. Uh, Wife Swap on ABC. Ooh. Fire. Fire. CBS had a double showing of The King of Queens and then How I Met Your Mother. My eyes are getting weary. Fox had Prison Break. (laughs) All right. And NBC had Deal or No Deal. Ooh. UWB Kids, Seventh Heaven was on. Oh. Welcome back. Can't believe fucking Seventh Heaven, man. That's, I haven't heard about that in forever. Crazy. God, I don't even want to think about it. What? And according to the Nick's Story Wiki, at eight o'clock you had SpongeBob, followed by All Grown Up. Ooh, all what right. a time! Yeah, so yeah. everyone's just watching Monday Night Raw and not caring about yeah. the ratings, right? Also, I guess speaking about uh, really quick to recap earlier, talking about random bits now. Uh, it's currently 2014 in Ethiopia. So, just a fun fact. For everyone Shout out to them. Yeah, they have a 13 month calendar. <laughs> yeah, bring it back. Bring it back. I wish it was 2014 again. I remember being X years old. And I'm trying to get to Ethiopia one day. It seems like a fun time. You know who's not from Ethiopia? Oh. Mickey James. How do you know that? You well, know, well, because she, that's she she's got from angry. Toronto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Same place. Yeah, so, Maria. You know, SmackUp's favorite wrestler, they won't admit it, but it's true, is interviewing the great Mickey James, who looking fabulous. I don't know what she's trying to go for with this new look, but it is quite stunning on her. Wouldn't you all agree? I do not like the look. I think she looks uh, uncanny valley with the blonde hair. Something about the way her, her eyeshadow mixes with her fucking, just like her wings that she's got on. With the fucking blonde hair, just does not look right for her. It just doesn't register in my head that that's Mickey James. Oh, oh, and, I see what it is. I see what it is. What? I can't believe it. <laughs> it's twenty thirty four. Yeah. Come on, man. Anyways, <laughs> so <laughs> they're interviewing Mickey James. So Mickey James talking about how it's all thanks to Trish. Trish is the reason I won. And all this stuff, and, you know, then she goes on, and she's like, yeah. And it's like, I'm glad to represent my home place of Toronto. And Maria, who, again, smacks up favorite wrestler, questions this. She's like, Mickey, you're not from Toronto. What an idiot. Who hired Maria to be in an interview? (laughs) I don't know. But, you know what, Mickey James... All women's champion, the hero of the masses, uh, decides, you know what, Maria, how about you have a title match with me? I'll give you a shot at the WWE Women's Championship. 
And Maria's happy. It's like, oh my god, it's gonna be so fun. It's like, yeah, it's gonna be so fun. Fun, yeah. And they they basically do girl talk for about two minutes. Uh, this was all right to start up a match, I guess. It's really nothing that special, but clearly there's something going on with this Toronto segment because that kind of changed the tone. I don't know exactly what. Mickey James never lies, but I guess we'll find out in the middle of the match. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Dude, what's up with May 19th? Oh, May 19th. Cursed date. Yeah, it's a cursed date. That's crazy. You don't have to do this as anniversary, right? Yeah. So there's a there's a bit that I'm reading from this uh, other person's notes about the show. Apparently there was a uh, a segment cut from the Peacock version where they showed a clip of uh, Ceno Evil, which probably would okay. have made no more sense about what happened afterwards. Yes, that explains it because yeah. they talk about it kind of, and I didn't know why. So there apparently they tried to interview Kane, and he didn't show up to the interview. And they were, like, trying to find him. And then they cut to, like, a commercial break. And he comes back. And Kane's wandering through the back. So that the setup for the segment it was just not on the episode. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> um, but, yeah, he's wandering through the back. He keeps hearing voices. And he's hearing May 19th. May Are 19th. they not his voice in his own head? I thought that's what it was. Is it his own voice? I think It it's... sounds enough like him that it might be. I'm going to say it is. I think so. And then everyone will know you're going to know May 19th is here, May 19th. And he's freaking out. Did the show come say hi to him or did that? Am I just? Yeah, yeah no, he's okay. like, he came up and he's like, hey, hey you, you okay? all right? That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, they have work to do. Yeah, we got to go big, work. Yeah, which Big Show is probably the best baby face on this entire show. You think yeah. so? Yeah. I, yeah, think so. I think he's I the agree. most likable. He's getting better. Definitely getting yeah, better. Yeah, like, even before, like, he was kind of like, like, he's a stand-up guy. Like, yeah, he'll play a little bit, but, like, he he's the most honorable. Like, Cena, like, does weird shit all the time, so it can't be him. And all the other faces get their shit kicked in, so it's like, he, he's kind of the most stand-up. He did turn down sex with Lita in the defense of Ric Flair. Yeah. So he is honorable with his big fat shirt. You don't want to go seven foot. You don't want to go with the seven foot giant. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, you want to yeah. go to seventh I'll, heaven with the seven that's footer. It. That's it. Yeah. I'll, unless you can name me a more honorable, nicer baby face on the card. Mickey James. Well, yeah, that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> we got a tag team title match the spirit squad starring johnny and nikki are fighting big show and kane really cool to see johnny and nikki uh fighting for the champion or just fighting for the belts that they are uh defending uh mitch is he ever gonna get a match do they just fucking hate that guy no what happened backstage to where they just fucking say mitch you're not wrestling i don't want you i don't know Did, did john cena take his girlfriend too Possibly, Ooh. yeah. Cause, uh, maybe Mitch isn't good. I, I haven't seen him. So, so, like, when I was reading up a little bit on like the January like OV or, not, or the Wrestling Observer newsletter, like they were big mm. OVW guys. Like they were five of the stars, and they just decided to push them up at once. And then whatever reason, they made the Spirit Squad gimmick. So these were like the top guys. I think Johnny was like a three time champion going in. Like he was like the star <laughs> of OVW. And Kenny kind of just became like the the leader, but then Mitch, I don't know what the fuck happened. It's just whatever. Like, who cares about Mitch? It's kind of sad. But Johnny and Nikki are here, and they're pretty good. I don't know why they're not wrestling more often. Like, I wish I could see them in singles matches where they're not doing this shitty gimmick. I, I don't, wink, I don't wink, know about wink, this wink, Nikki wink, guy. wink. Oh. I don't know about this Nikki guy. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know so. because. Nikki was doing some of the funniest shit in that match. Every single time Big Show would pick him up, he would fucking squeal and scream and just flop around like a fish as soon as he gets like choke slammed or slammed on the ground. Like it is hilarious watching that guy sell. I wonder if he'll do it in the future. Wink, 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 wink. Wait, hold on. I'm gonna get a call from Joe. Hello. Ooh. Yeah, he's saying Nikki's the goat. I just wanna let uh smack up guy. Sorry. Nah, SmackUp would never say anything good about the show, except their favorite wrestler, Maria. 
Maria. <laughs> so the way this match actually plays out is basically Big Show is here to show the world. So <laughs> That's he right. starts off fighting Johnny, and he just pulls Johnny's shirt up and starts smacking him oh my in the stomach repeatedly. It sounds vile. Gunther level slaps with a much bigger hand onto Johnny's bare stomach, steps on Johnny's head. Jerry Lawler says two things in a row that are horrifying. The first thing is that a guy that's Big Show's weight should actually be 17 feet tall. Thank you. Is that true? And and Jerry on Big Show's feet, and I quote, I don't mind looking at the size of them. I wouldn't want to actually feel them. So... Jerry, kind of a foot guy, but not entirely. So Big Show kicks the shit out of Johnny. He then goes and tags in Kane, who also beats the shit out of Johnny. At one point, Johnny is crumpled in the corner with his shirt still a little up. We get a camera shot. You can see Big Show's handprint just red on his stomach. It's wild. Johnny tags out to Nikki, who also gets his ass kicked. This is where the announcers start talking about how Kane starred in a movie. (laughs) <laughs> which since i didn't get this segment i didn't know what they were talking well i knew what they were talking about but i don't know if it mentioned on the show but with the cut segment i guess in kayfabe kane starred in this movie seems yeah. to be the thing so they talk about that the spirit squad starts getting a bit of offense in but then kane beats the show of him again tags in big show big show goes to the corner where all the spirit squad are and he yells i've dated bigger women than you guys that's pretty good. Oh. Joey Styles says, how many big shows do you think Johnny is seeing right now? <laughs> Nobody sells this joke at all. Truly horrible stuff. Big show, Gorilla presses Nikki over the top rope as Nikki just screeches like Ty was saying. We go to commercial. <laughs> After commercial, Kane's in. He's on the top rope. The Spirit Squad on the outside throw him off the top rope he gets kicked in the head and then i johnny or nikki whichever one is in distracts the ref and kenny just punches kane right in the head they then throw kane outside they all start beating him up until big show starts running like a bull at them then they all run away they beat up kane for several several boring minutes but then kane does the sit up and starts shaking his head like he did in the segment where he was telling himself about May 19th. Cover just beats the shit out of all of them. And then he throws them in the ring and throws a bunch of chairs into the ring and gets either DQ'd or counted out or whatever for doing this. Yeah. He hasn't... I don't think he used them yet, but whatever. Either way, Big Kane has been DQ'd. Yeah, they count as DQ'd. Okay. And then he just starts kicking the shit out of everybody in the squad, Spirit Squad and the ref. As Big Show is outside, like, Kane, what? Hey, Kane, please, come on. Kane, why, please? And then he gets in the ring and says, you need to fucking relax. What are you doing? After Kane chokeslams the ref, who takes a good bump. It was pr- He got up real high. So Kane gets in Big Show's face. He's like, it's me. Come on. Calm down. They shove a little bit. But Big Show keeps talking to Kane. Kane seems to be like, okay, okay, fine. But then he goes for the choke slam, goozles Big Show. Big Show counter goozles him, so they're both holding each other's <laughs> throats. But then Kane gouges Big Show's eye out and hits him with a choke slam and leaves. Heartbreaking. The Big Kane is over. Carlito and Chris Masters are over. Who the fuck are the tag teams <laughs> yes. that exist anymore? You got Spirit yeah. Squad. Yep. That's, yeah, that's you got a... Spirit Squad. Oh, okay. And a uh, Rory and Mick, excuse me, the Highlanders that Ty promises to show <laughs> They'll up. They'll be there. They'll be there eventually. <laughs> no, well, they won't. What about Lance K, Trevor real. Murdoch? We got that. They exist somewhere. Does, yeah. They haven't been on screen in like four months. Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what do you want from me? <laughs> we got, we got uh, no time for that. We got time for um, uh, Chris Guy at some point. You know, we don't got time for no uh, tag teams. But we speaking see of no which, evil. Speaking of which, I'm mad that they broke this team up because they've been actually doing really well as a team, and I wish they would have done that more throughout the first half of what we've been watching because all the singles matches they did were dog shit. But then them being a huh. team, they were actually doing some good work. 
they had a decent match at Mania. Big Show was going crazy. They had a good match last week. And, I mean, honestly, I thought this match wasn't that bad. It just went way too long. Like, if this was, like, seven minutes, would have been a lot more effective. They didn't need to do all the stalling with Kane. Because the moves that they were doing, the big stuff, was really good. Yeah, this was the longest match on the show. It, it should not have gone 13 minutes. No. No. But just to set up fucking May 19th, are you kidding me? Yeah, the, uh, it was stupid. Are like, we ever going to cover the movie? I guess as yeah, an aside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. tune in to oh, You yeah. Don't Have to Watch This around the time of May 19th. Yeah, the chaperone. Maybe we'll then. watch it on May 19th. Ooh. 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 Ah. Yeah, probably watch on May 19th. We'll make it a thing. <laughs> All right, hell yeah. Let me see what kind of date that is. That is the a future. Sunday. <gasps> it lines up. <gasps> Oh, dee do do. Uh, John Cena is backstage, and not much is said. They're just like, "Are you ready to team up with the Big H?" He goes, "Yeah, I don't like him, and I don't like Edge either." Oh, okay. Why did they? Why did they talk to John backstage? Like, what's the point of these backstage segments where they just don't say shit? Like. They weren't even like getting excited about the title match. Is did they set that in stone for back? I think they did. Yeah. So this is a triple threat set in stone. So yeah. like, what? He didn't really get any excitement for the main event. Like if I tuned in and saw John Cena just go, yeah, I think I'll do good with Triple H. Like I don't. Who the fuck is this guy? What do I care? Like it's ridiculous. Don't be doing the bad... Like, the one with Mickey James earlier actually had a purpose because they set up a match. I'm sick of it. <laughs> I'm sick of this shit. These backstage segments need to have a point. On SmackDown, they do. Uh-oh. <laughs> Hate to see it. But now, after John Cena took us to hell, Vince is taking us to church. Oh, God. That fu fuck you. Vince opens the door, <laughs> and he's like, Ah, oh, Shane, we're here. Ah, uh, Did you make the donation, Shane? Shane's like, oh, I know they don't accept credit card. He's like, Ah, oh, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. What are they doing? And then... Um, <laughs> he just, like, walks through, like, like the... To get into the... I don't know what they call it. I don't. I don't go to church. What's so like the big room? The big room with like. So the, what do they call that? I have. I have a question. Uh, yeah. Do you know what denomination is Shawn Michaels? Because this was clearly a Catholic church they went to. I think he's. And Catholic. I don't think he's Catholic. Is he not? Is he? I don't know. I don't, no, if he's born he's, again, he's some kind of. Well, I was going to say insane Protestant. All Protestants. Yeah, that's usually insane, like a Protestant but... like thing when you're born again. Okay. Do you think like if Vince went... knows or cares? Uh, no. No, at, well, no, I think he knows, but I don't think he cares. Um, I Vince... think he just thought the Catholic Church fits his angle better. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, well, he takes he a... says he's a non-denominational Christian. Fair enough. So, yeah, in some kind of fucking prod. He takes a big handful of that holy water, and he slurps it up. And he just slurps shit up a little bit. And then you're like, what? Is he just drinking holy water? The crowd starts booing that. Oh, yeah. Cause... Can't be doing that. No. And then he does the Triple H spit and he goes, ah. <laughs> fucking laugh my know. ass off. <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> this... yeah, Shane, it's, this it's... whole time is like, what it's the fuck disgusting. are you doing? Please don't. I know. This, this funny enough based on recent reports, is probably an allegory to their actual relationship at this time. Shane looks supremely uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. It is yeah. It is hilarious. I'm not, like, it's funny. I don't know why it's making me laugh. He keeps comparing himself to God. He's like, you know, God, you created Adam and Eve, and I created Hulk Hogan. And Stone and Cold. And Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know, you, God, you cast out demons, and I cast out Ted Turner from wrestling. 
It's been like six years. He can't get over this fucking thing. He has his uh his ten commandments or his seven Let's commandments. Fuck up about Ted Turner. <laughs> nah, keep going. I love it. He uh he goes. I am the boss. Two. There are no other bosses before me. Three. Sasha Banks broke a commandment. Thou shall not tell me to move on. <sighs> thou shall not take thy urine and douse it into my face. Thou I shall not cross thy arms and shout suck it as he's doing the suck it like motion <laughs> in church. Very good. Six, thy shall not take my disciple's face and shove it into my rectal cavity. He can't stop saying rectal yes. cavity. <laughs> Vince again reminding us he booked his own son to eat his ass. And yeah. seven, and the last That's one, good. thou shall not take a garbage can and shove it over my head and fall from a 30-foot ladder and try to take me out. And then I'm going to pass it over to my son, Marty, as he talks about the Lord's Prayer. Thanks, Dad. I guess. <laughs> new new raw town lore ties my dad. Yo. So, Yo! so Vince does say that Sean broke all of Vince's commandments. He will face the backlash and not even God himself can stop Vince. Sadly, he's correct about that. I'm still pulling for you, God. You still got time. So Shane goes up to the dais, and he starts saying a prayer. And, like, the first bit of this is just an actual prayer, and the crowd starts going, what, at it? Which I thought was funny. So and then eventually just becomes about his dad. And the line I have written here is, again, Vince McMahon is writing this to make his own son say things about, the, about him. After he booked his own son to eat his ass... <coughs> This is a real human man that has done these things. Yeah. I, but, yeah. Don't forget the incest angle that almost happened. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. A, a, another one. This basically is one. So Shane says, that. Mr. McMahon, whose tanned, well-toned body supersedes that of a normal 60-year-old, whose mighty grapefruits produce the life-giving semen that spawned me... And then he Vince just makes <laughs> his son say that. Then Shane's like, Dad, come on, dude. What the fuck? Probably a shoot. And they walk up to the altar. And Vince standing right in front of the altar at Church Brand Church says he will release the apocalypse on Sean. And if he's wrong, may God strike me down right here, right now. <laughs> Shane moves a few Shane feet away. Vince away. remains unstricken. And then Vince says, God has forsaken Sean, and may God bless the name of Vincent Kennedy McMahon. And then shitty thunderstorm sound effects from, like, 1945 start playing. Yeah, you know, you know, God was just being a true uh, professional wrestler at that moment. He was waiting for the pay-per-view. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't want to give it all out on free TV. Yeah, God needs the heat to get, the heat to get built, so when he makes his hot tag in, yeah, yeah. the crowd will pop. Yeah, Shane shouldn't also, even have to move. Also, the other incest angle was Vince wanted to do an incest ang an incest angle with Stephanie. Oh, great! And then he and said, he also yeah, booked his daughter to be kissed, uh, to some extent against her will by multiple other men. Oh. As Vince would look at it and go, "Yeah, yeah, kiss her more." Oh, yeah, she's oh. the spawn of my seed. Kiss well, me. I mean, kiss her. Even worse was that, like Vince goes. Okay, we're gonna have an incense angle with uh, me and Steph, and then she goes, "Absolutely not." And he goes, "Okay, well, how about you and your brother?" <laughs> oh, and they're like, "No." <laughs> He's like, "Ah, oh, god damn it!" Oh man! Ah, oh, fuck! This is such good shit. Such good shit. Oh, man, what the fuck is up with Raw right now? <laughs> It's uh, it's the best show on TV. It's really a shame we don't have Emerald here to bask in the glory of Vince oh, he and Shane in the church. Yeah, he would have loved this segment. Too bad he's dead. Yeah, he died. Yeah. Unfortunate. Rip. Yep. 
Uh, Ec- ECMO's it- here. ECMO. ECMO. Is it ECMO mania time? I think so. Time. Can we explain the ECMO thing? Because this happened off air. Yeah, oh, so yeah. after after the episode ended uh, last recording, Dave comes up to all of us and goes, Hey, wasn't he known as ECMO? And I go, what the fuck are you talking about? We all <laughs> shouted at him because no human alive has ever been known as ECMO. I didn't. I believed him. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? And I had to look him up. In, in TNA, he's wearing a fucking ECMO jersey. Yeah, and his name is Umaga. ECMO. Umaga is ECMO. And I was like, what? How did you know that? <laughs> Dave is the world's biggest fan of 2005 TNA. So I, <laughs> I immediately had to buy him on eBay a fucking <laughs> ECMO card. So there you yeah, go. I have an ECMO trading card in my ECMO binder now. Card. ECMO is Umaga, by the way. We didn't say yeah. that. Yeah, I, it's I, I Umaga. Said, yeah. Umaga is ECMO. That is insane. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, so Armando Alejandro Estrada comes out hey. of the ring and he yells uh, about Umaga. And Umaga runs, just runs down the ring, and I don't know if his name is ever actually said, but it's it's Colt Cabana or uh, Guy, Chris Guy, yeah, Some, Chris Guy. But Colt boom, Cabana, boom. Colt Cabana it, exists in the ring, and Umaga just runs out, squashes him in I w- what like two minutes, Martin? I think you have the time. Yeah, a minute. If 10. that, a minute ten. Yeah, yeah, just to just for them to yell about how he's like 325 pounds or whatever, and he's a, a monster man, and he just kills Colt Cabana, Chris Guy, who is here seemingly just to be killed. Uh, and then Alejandro Estrada stands over him with the sausages in his pocket and starts yelling, while Umaga just you know sticks his thumb in his jugular and turns his blood off and uh, kills him. Yeah, and, that's uh, a nasty move. That is a nasty move. But yeah, unfortunately, we don't get any cool spots from uh, the big man Umaga. Is currently still just squashing people to set up how big and scary he is. Um, I cannot wait for that to not get paid off in two months. I think next week he's got a real match, so we can look forward to that. That is exciting. Umaga's look is less racist this week. It's still pretty racist, but less so than last week. Yeah, that's yeah, his. He- that's his normal look where it's all tied up i didn't understand i was like why is it so like his hair was so crazy i think when he debuted. it's supposed i think it's supposed to be a reference to the wild samoans because yes. like they're related but i don't hit. think it came off as well as it they wanted it to no and i don't think he was directly referred to as a beast this week so yeah. it's we're, we're getting in the better we're getting better yeah but yeah, I mean that, that was unfortunately that's it. That's all we really get. And then it goes to commercial, and then uh, some of Martin's favorite guys come out into the ring. Well, first there's the SmackDown rebound and oh. the Raw rewind that are Ooh. presented to you by Bowflex. Bowflex, baby. Yes, Bowflex, super reliable. You could really hang on that. <laughs> yes, sir. Just shows you some shit that already happened. We've already talked about. So unfortunately. Carlito is here, there and is. he's here even less fortunately to talk about Chris Masters, his ex-boyfriend. Carlito mm. tells us he's struggling less with his words this week, so I guess good job by him. He says he's lost 275 pounds of dead weight named Chris Masters. <laughs> and Carlito says, this oh, isn't about him turning on me or whatever, yada yada. This is about Chris Masters not being cool. And if Chris Masters wants to do something about it, be more than happy. And then Chris Masters' music plays, and he comes to the ring also with a microphone. And he says, I'm not here to beat you up, Carlito. We have a match at Backlash for that. However, look how many times you screwed me over. And Carlito says, wow, I'm just a small bean. I don't remember that. Come on. <laughs> and Chris Masters like, I cost us a title because I hate you. Carlito says, are you fucking stupid? <laughs> and unfortunately, Carlito is right here. Yeah, that was, And then Carlito nice. says, the Master Lock Challenge is stupid and he can break it. And Chris Bass is like, okay, dude, sure. So Carlito demands a ref. 
goes to the ring, it goes outside, finds the folding chair to use as the cuck chair for the master lock challenge, loads up some <laughs> apple into his mouth, and keeps holding the apple. Chris Masters and the ref object to the apple being held, but Carlito says, no, no, I'm going to hold the apple. I need it. And then he starts just throwing the apple up in the air to himself, and Chris Masters catches it out of the air and just throws it outside. And as he turns to do this, Carlito grabs the cup chair and hits Chris Masters with unprotected chair shot. That to was the disgusting. Head. That like yeah. clock yeah. Yeah. in the that head. That was awesome. And uh, if I if remember Ty, hey, knock knock, <clears throat> put it in the the picture right now of the crowd looking stunned that his head got fucking blown up. It's yeah, very funny. Shot. The guy's just yeah. smiling, and then there's another girl just, like, <laughs> devastated. The duality of Martin. <laughs> yeah. Unprotected chair shot to the head, and Carlito leaves. And then we get a recap of Chavo Guerrero losing his IC title shot. There's an Eddie Guerrero mention. Ty is in shambles. Ty hates Eddie Dude, Guerrero. Dude, I'm so sick of this, man. <laughs> off, off air, he said he was glad Eddie Guerrero died. It was crazy. No, come on. <laughs> Dude, you and, fucking beat the rock, huh? Yeah, and Chavo's sad, and next week he has an interview with Jim Ross about how sad he is. Yeah, that that promo picture is hilarious, by the way. It just looks... Why is fucking JR looks so angry? Editor Ty, you know what to do. Put it in there. But real quick, going back to the Chris Masters Carlito segment, where Chris Masters was like, I'm devious. I'm the one who cost us the title. Um, going back... Chris Masters tried to stop a, uh, a choke slam and got kicked in the face, and Carlito got pinned. So I don't know what Chris Masters is talking about because he didn't actively try to lose the match. Well, he's still a heel, title. so he's lying. Carlito got pinned, and Masters tried to save him, but got kicked in the head. So what's the feud here? If he had been a little faster, he wouldn't have been kicked in the head. He planned it with the big cane. Listen, when you're That's 275 right. pounds of pure fucking meat, you can't run that fast. He tried. Chris Masters knows what happened May 19th. <laughs> Can we call up Christopher Masters right now and see yeah. what happened on May 19th? Um, I mean, Chris Adonis does stuff in NWA. I'm pretty sure if we gave him $50 in a sandwich, we could get him to talk to us. Hi there. We're, hey. Hi there. We're main event time with main event Marty. Whoa. Hi there. No, we're Whoa. not. Just kidding. Yeah, no, Hi it is there. the real main event. What? With Nico. Ah, yes, that's right. My bad. Okay. So, dear listeners, my beloveds, I gotta be honest with you. This was a fine match, considering that it's Maria wrestling Mickey James. For the women's title. Uh, But, yeah, for the women's title. I, I mean, for this era, I think it's fine. But, honestly, there are a few things uh, kind of more important that didn't involve the match. The first thing is how the match starts. Man, I don't know about you guys, but I wish I was a commentator at this episode because they got free Subway meals. Isn't that great, everyone? I mean, they got God. the meatball marinara. I yeah. want to scream. How fucking disrespectful is that to go, we got the women's title match. Yes, I get it. It's Maria. And Maria is a smack up, you know, women of the year. But what the fuck? They go, here's the match. And then they pan over to the commentators like, we do not care. Look at them eating the subs. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It, it, not only that, it plays into something more, which I don't know if you guys caught it because nobody's mentioned it yet. But I caught it the fucking second it happened. Sure. They eat the subs on air yeah like how me, unprofessional do. do you have to be to yeah. just continuously eat directly into a microphone and, on a show they, you're doing that people listen to i can't and, believe it i cannot <laughs> believe it and they know too because they pointed out that this is considered unprofessional but wait we got free meals and of course coach steals is joey styles meal which i mean that's like the most baby face thing coach has ever done so far so is that I, that paper did not even look like Subway. I had to, like, squint. I'm like, is this actually... Are they eating Subway? Or are they just eating yeah. fucking, like, a fucking deli down the street or a, a gas station sub? I mean, 
I, that would probably Subway. actually cost more and taste better than Subway. So I, 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 it has to actually be Subway. Like that, that'd be the dumbest thing if they kayfabed the Subway sandwiches. <laughs> Editor Ty, <laughs> please, please include the picture of Joey Styles introducing the subs as he puts his hands out to go look at all these subs. So, and so here's the time. thing: if that was just how they introduced the match, fine, I get it. You gotta have your advertisements, but. Throughout half of this match, actually most of the commentary, this match was about the Subway sandwiches. Coach yells, I, mean, I got the meatball marinara, kid. Yeah, it's like, you're, <laughs> you're a meatball marinara, which is one of the worst freaking comebacks <laughs> no. I've ever heard. Come on. What's that even mean? You're a meatball. What are you trying to say about Coach? I, I don't get this. Joey Styles, get off the show. <laughs> uh... But it goes on and on. And eventually, Mickey James goes for the kick, takes the win. Excellent. Cool. All of a sudden, somebody comes out. It's Mickey James. <gasps> but how could this be? Mickey James is already in the ring, you know? And there wasn't no, anybody. it's Trish. Trust no. as Mickey James. That was that was a full moon. It was. <laughs> it was a full moon. Because and let me tell you, which means you know what that means, everyone. It's one of the big shadows coming out. Yeah. Oh. yeah that's right. That's right. Every full moon, you gotta be aware of your shadows. Was was that a rib? Because does Mickey like when Mickey wears that? Does she wear pants underneath her like bigger no, underwear? No, that that is how she wears it. What? I don't I, remember that. It, it's because now Mickey James is very plump, Maybe I'm not, but I'm not I don't know if Trish did something to plump. heighten herself. But <laughs> goddamn, it it makes it more revealing. It was every single time she moved or jumped or like went to the ring. It was just like the camera just went right up there. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I, for one, I'm, I'm a fan of this. They're dressing up as each other. I love it. It's a good bit. I'm all in. Respectfully, of course. Respectfully, yeah, yeah. And Trish looks respectful yeah. with that, uh, with the brunette hair. Oh yes, very respectful. And you know, she's like, "Oh my gosh, I'm such a big fan." She, she's basically doing the Mickey thing, and she's like, "Oh my god!" And if I could only, I just want to be just like you. And there's only one thing that I want, and that's to be like my hero, Mickey James, to be the WWE Women's Champion. And then she 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 seals the deal. She gives us what John Cena and Triple H couldn't at WrestleMania. She goes in for the lip lock. Oh, hey, a deadly maneuver. And now Mickey James is freaking out. The mind games are on. It looks like Trish Stratus. Got the one on her. Now, that I like that part of the segment, but remember how we're all talking about Subway? Yeah. Well, let's go back to King. During okay. this ending part of the thing, King goes, well, it looks like she got one up on Piggy James. No, they started it then? Yes. Yeah, so this no. whole Subway thing was a build-up to the Piggy James line. Oh, so this is clearly God. she's still being punished for mania because this, this, yeah. this is yeah we are in piggy james mode my man and it's going to be the king bringing us all the piggy james I, I think that's absolutely disgusting because they were it, like promoting that moment for a long time afterwards is like a big yeah. moment that happened and why are they acting like that's such a negative thing when they were playing into this uh lesbian angle the whole fucking time yeah. That is this that is bad. Yeah. So I'm glad I caught that because like I kept sitting here. I'm like, at first it was just kind of stupid. It's like, okay, you know what? I know they don't care about the women's belt. I know that they just kinda are like whatever, so fine. They're, they're gonna put a promo over a women's match. Disrespectful, but I get it. And then King drops that fucking piggy James line, and I'm like and there's no attention brought to it yet, but it's like oh, Oh, this is what that's really about. This this is a rib against Mickey for fucking up. 
that they talked halfway through a match about fucking food, and then they call her fucking Piggy James. Man. What pieces of shit? Fuck that. Jeez Louise. Yeah, it, listen, it's shitty to do to begin with, but also yeah. Mickey James is not even close to being overweight. I don't no. fucking get it. Not even close. No. 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 I, I don't understand, like, what their obsession is with Mickey's weight going forward. It, 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 it has to be punishment. They're just trying to call a fat because yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but they bring up this is a storyline in 2010. Yeah, so they bring it back. She weighs more than 80 pounds. Crazy. Can, yeah. How dare she? Ty, Ty, hit a fuck the fed. Fuck the fed! There we go. Thank you. Thanks, Taz. Go back to yeah. SmackDown. Like... Fuck the fed! Okay. And now I got to talk about the main event. Ty, can you hit that again for me? Because holy shit. Fuck the fed! All right. John Cena and Triple H versus Edge. Listener, we've been going for seven hours now. Don't worry, this is going to be short because I zoned out for half of this match. So your entrances start at 1.15.10 on the timeline in the Peacock version. They end at 1.19.45. So it's a 15-minute segment, but only 10 of it is the match. And really, this match should have gone three. So Cena starts out fighting Edge, and Edge gets the early advantage they do as John Cena and Triple H fight. John Cena and Edge proceed to do for several minutes the same old shit they've been doing for weeks. For weeks and for weeks. How many times have they, like, been involved in a match against each other? Which it's one? Gotta be... Cena and John? Yeah, Cena and Edge. The it's Cena gotta be double digits since January. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. So they do all the same shit they've already done in the main event of a TV Raw show where nobody does anything to begin with. So I zone out for five minutes. I come back in when one of the announcers says this match is a long way from being over. Oh. I <laughs> consider I suicide, but fight through it. Oh man, they do the punch and then the other guy do the punch. It's crazy. Everybody in this match, if there's a reaction to any of them, they are getting booed. This crowd is quiet or just mad that this is what they have to deal with. Edge is a heel. Triple H is a heel. They don't like John Cena. I legitimately think the person they like the most here probably is Edge. And I get it. I really do. But fuck, that's sad. So then the actual finish starts. Triple H avoids the spear. Hits a spine buster and he crawls over to tag in John Cena. The crowd is upset to see John Cena. Some guy in the front row has John Cena hands. They've made it home for themselves. That's the best <laughs> part of this match. They're giant. If Ty can get a screen grab of that, it's they put a lot of work into these big John Cena hands. Real, real quick, I will try my best, but Peacock has uh, blacked out every screen from recording, so I cannot take pictures, and I cannot That's get right. recordings. So I will try to take a picture with my phone, and I'll pull it up there. So Okay. Well, or <laughs> just take an image of John Cena's hands and make it real big and low res and just put that on the I'll, screen. I'll do my best. Do that. Yeah. yeah, so all the pictures, I guess, you know, cut aside, all the pictures of Vince McMahon I send you, I get from Peacock, so maybe I've defeated it. So the, if you want to send me the timestamp, I can attempt yeah, to get it for you're you. You're going to be my camera guy now, pal. Turn off will, your hardware acceleration or whatever, Ooh, kid. You know what? I could do that. Yeah. Yeah. We're keeping all this in because this is more interesting it, than the it's match. Honestly, yeah, it's honestly a big deal. It just kind of sucks. Like You can't even like stream Discord with stuff anymore Like with your friends. It's like it's not really stopping people from pirate stuff. Someone's paying for it. No. Big time. It's like having your friends not over a, and watching it. Like you want everyone well, to pay for it in the room. Well, not only that, it's like if you watch like a live pay per view or paid live event on Peacock, and you start midway, you can't rewind it in the year twenty twenty four. It's insane. a bad service. Here yeah, is your, here is your I, at least monthly plea to bring back the network. It was better than Peacock ten years ago I by some it. distance. And that's crazy. Yeah, we all hated it. But little did we not. That's usually how it anyway, goes. Anyway, <laughs> it, it, don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you got till it's gone? That's right. Yeah. 
And now, unfortunately, what I have to deal with is the finish of this fucking match, which, as you can tell, dear listener, by how excited we are to talk about it, was very good. <laughs> that was great. So, your very. finish segment. Uh, John Cena gets Edge into the FU. Triple H runs over, gets Edge out of the FU, so Triple H can pedigree Edge because he wants to be the cool guy. I hit the thing that did the win, even though I'm not legal. John Cena gets mad, hits Triple H with the FU, and then jumps on Edge's corpse, hits him with the STFU, and Edge taps out. So John Cena and Triple H have defeated Edge, but they all started fighting again at the end. Crazy, it's just That's like insane. last week. And I can't wait for the same fucking <laughs> thing to happen next week, but let's see, would that be Triple H getting pinned? Because now Cena and Edge took a loss? Great. Do you think Triple H they is going to get the dub because he cannot lose, brother? Yeah, he come might, on, but look, I'm fairly certain the bit is going to be, wow, they all get the pin over each other, who win at the triple threat, but it is very Triple H to insist on winning on TV all the time. God. So who the fuck knows? So why Zero did Edge, stars. Why did Edge get so much time in this match? Because obviously, let's uh, for the listeners at home, we're going to get another handicap match. This is the longest one out of the <laughs> three. Maybe some, I, yeah, I don't know. The, there was, there were two matches that went more than two minutes on this show. How many matches were even here? There uh, were five 10? matches on this show. Yeah, five. And well, these two were more or less ten minutes. Um. Well, so this one's seven forty nine. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. That's that. Sh- my God. It yeah. Felt so much longer. Ugh. But. It's so bizarre that you got John Cena, the champ, getting steamrolled by Edge and Triple H. Like, I, I think Cena maybe hit like a couple moves, but he was steamrolled. And yeah, then you it wasn't got, close. Then you got Edge, and he's fucking fighting him back. He's beating up Triple H. He's beating up Cena. I'm like, why is Edge getting so much over on these guys? Like, he was going, like, doing moves. He almost won. He could have won. Yeah, they're definitely pushing Edge. I mean, which I'm cool with. I like his look. I mean,. He's probably the best, like, person to watch on the show. Like, when, when they had Cena uh, fighting by himself, Triple H was just sitting up there because he wanted to watch Edge fight him. <laughs> and then yeah. Edge was watching him. So they just beat the shit out of Cena. And I'm like, why, why is Edge, like, the main guy now? Like, it makes no sense to me because he's not the champion. He's not really, like, the top guy. Triple H, you consider, like, he is, like, elite. You think of that guy yeah. is always going to be winning at that time because he had the the reign of terror and he got seen as the champion who won't lose ever. And it's like now you got Edge and you don't believe him as a champion because he cheats to win or he cheated to get the money in the bank and Vince brought him out to win the belt. Like it doesn't matter. Like, like what the fuck, man? Why is Edge the guy? I love Edge. He's my favorite wrestler of all time, but I don't even see him as a star yet. And he's you doubling he up knows. on the big boys. Like, it just, ah, just, my wrestling ain't believable? What the heck? Yeah, I don't, I, this does not get me excited about Backlash. I, I don't think anything will. I think Backlash is just a bad card. So, I think it's just dead in the water. Going back yeah. into Martin's earlier thing about John Cena versus Edge, let me, let me build up every John Cena Edge match that uh, has been happened since they started wrestling together. SmackDown 2002, John Cena and Matt Hardy V1 defeated Edge and Rey Mysterio. 2003 Royal Rumble, they had a match together. 2005 Royal Rumble match they had together. And then uh, John Cena, Matt Hardy, Shawn Michaels, and Big Show defeated Masters, Edge, Kurt Angle, and Schnitzky. And then they had Carlito, Edge, and Angle defeat John Cena, Shawn Michaels, and Big Show. That's all 2005. And then 06, since we started watching, we had the title match at New Year's Revolution. We had John Cena and Ric Flair beat Masters and Edge, which we saw. And then they had the heavyweight title match at Rumble. Then they had Edge defeating, or not defeating, but Edge versus Cena again for the title on the Raw after. And then we had the Cena Maria versus Edge and Lita mixed tag match the next week. And then the week after, we had the World Heavyweight or WWE Championship match against Cena and Edge with Mick Foley as the special ref. And then we had the two on one handicap oh, match. Shit. And then we have the two on one handicap match again. So what do they team next week? I th- I think that's the lineup would probably be. It's Cena and Edge versus H. Yeah. Or that already happened. 
Okay. That is definitely happening next week. Okay. I'm sorry for the spoilers for all the people listening at home, but I mean they've done two. Wow. Already. And I can't believe you spoiled. And now I got even another spoiler for Martin just to make his heart hurt. We have three more handicap matches before the uh, pay per view. What? Well, all right. Good. Ugh. Including the the match of Cena and Edge versus Triple H. Okay, cool. so like, why do they keep doing these handicap matches? I don't know. Is this? It's got to be one of those weird things that Vince does for like a month, like when he decided that wrestling shouldn't happen during commercial breaks. It's a real sport, and then they did two out of three small so matches on bad. Raw for like two or three weeks, oh. and then stopped. God, that was so bad. I remember because my dad would always watch wrestling with me when I was younger, and he always thought that they would just stop. And I'm like, no, they don't stop because there's a live crowd. And then Vince decided to take that and go, yeah, let's let's have them stop. Oh, yeah, dude. I, was, I remember was going to uh, like one of the first shows, and they'd actually just stop. So fucking stupid. I am miserable. Raw is killing me, and it's going to kill Main Event Marty even more. <laughs> Oh, I I already I have I know we're wrapping the show, but I have another quick death. Uh, Chris Adonis is the World Wrestling Council World Champion. He just what? won it in January. Yo, yeah. what? what? Yes, Chris Masters killed you... Bruiser Brody with Carlito's dad. You heard it here first. I'm glad him and Carlito what? are still the homies to this day. To this yeah. day. Real quick. Yeah. Real quick. Cage match. Gave this a three star, Matt. It's three star show, and you've been wrong. It's out of ten. Is it three? Yeah, three out of three out of ten. Yeah, it's really bad, and I can't. You've wait. been raw down. Yeah, you've been raw down. Wait, ah! is that this week or next? Raw week? Raw down. Raw down. Raw down. 